Genesis chapter 12, I'm going to start reading in, in verse 1. We'll read just a few verses here. It says, The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed And Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. We're going to stop reading right there. So I felt this scripture was was pretty fitting to read. Tonight we're taking some time just to honor seniors. And in just a a little bit, we're going to invite all the seniors to to come forward, the seniors that are here tonight. And uh, we we just want to anoint you, pray with you, bless you. Uh, so you're not, tonight isn't seniors last night. August the 16th will be officially your last night at Aspire Youth. But we, we want to like make sure that, that we get in this night just to like pray for you and recognize you just because we know that like a lot of people go on vacation. So we want to like do it in an ample time to make sure that as many people as possible were here. But I felt the scripture was very fitting for for seniors because we have here a story of a man who's leaving his parents, his father's house. He's he's going to, as God says, somewhere, right? God says, leave your father's house and go to where I'm going to show you. Go to where I'm going to take you. And so he's Basically, he, he doesn't have any instruction. He's just going to start walking with his family. He's got like a host of, of servants and family members, and he's just going to start walking. And eventually God is going to show him, hey, this is where I've wanted to, to take you. And so I felt it fitting, as I was saying, for, for the seniors, just because right now the seniors are in a phase of life where Things are changing. Something new is happening. God is taking you to a new place. Maybe that is a new place physically, a, a, a new place in terms of your education, in terms of college, a, a new place in terms of your giftings and your future as you begin to, as we like to think of it, like high school, it's just like you're just learning nonsense. But then like when you get to college, then it's like, okay, now I'm doing things that matter. And so does anybody, did anybody else like feel that way? It's like, now I'm doing things. No, nobody else felt that way. Nobody else felt how I, you guys are lying. You're either asleep or you're lying. Um, but it's just like now you're like actually doing things that are gonna attribute to like what you want to do. Um, and so, you know, you're in a quite literal new phase of life. But if you're not a senior, don't, don't tune me out here tonight because I believe this is also for you because what you'll find is that God so frequently will call you to new things, will call you to somewhere new, a place you've never gone, to do something that you've never done before, to say something you've never said before, to walk in a level of obedience and, or anointing that you've never walked in before, that God will lead you to do new things. Just a, a few years ago in, in 2017, as I was thinking over just the new things that God has asked us to do, me and my wife, in, in 2017, my, my wife got called into ministry. Before that point in time, my wife, Alyssa, she was the one doing offering an announcement, she, like the, the beautiful one. That's, she's like somewhere in the back back there. Uh, tomorrow's our 10-year anniversary, by the way. So we've been married for 10 years tomorrow. Um, but uh, she got called into ministry. And before that, she was like, I can sing on a stage, but you will never catch me talking on a stage. You know, she was like that type of a person. She's like, I will never speak in public in front of people. And then God called her to ministry and, you know, with us just having conversations, she was like, whoa, this is, this is a new thing, you know? And then in 2019, so that was 2017, in 2019, we were youth pastors at another church and God spoke to us like the first Sunday in July, spoke to me as I was sitting in Sunday service and said, hey, it's time to go. Just like dropped it right down into my spirit. Kind of like an Abraham thing. 
and it was like, okay, we didn't have anywhere to go. We didn't have any other instructions. So we, we prayed and fasted and, and got a little bit more instruction, but ultimately we had no idea where we were going to end up. But we knew that we were in a, a time where God is calling us to go somewhere we've never been, in a season where we're gonna be doing something we've never done before. And then, in, in 2021, you know, I'm on, at this point, I'm on staff here at, at Center Branch. I'm the youth pastor. And then Pastor Luke approaches me and says, hey, I want you guys to lead to pioneer a fifth and sixth grade ministry. And so we said, okay, you know, something that had never, they'd done fifth and sixth grade ministries in the past, but it was like gonna be this brand new thing. And so it's like, man, okay, now I've gotta do this, you know. I'd never led like an elementary level type of, of ministry before. Uh, how many of you guys serve in VBS? Yes, so I had like VBS experience back in the day. I used to be a mime. I, I was a pretty good one, I'm not gonna lie. I was only a mime one time, but then show us all. No, I'd, I've been out of practice for too long. I can't, I can't. Oh no, I'm just kidding. But um, I did go to Kroger dressed up as a mime and got kicked out. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I was like mocking people. The employees were laughing, but they were like, for your safety. Am I, am I gonna get ran over by a shopping cart? Like, what do you mean for my safety? Anyways, so, so God, God will very often call you to do new things, to step out in a new way. And this is often the avenue that God uses to take you to a new level of impact to a new level of blessing. In the case of Abram here, who was later called Abraham, Abram, God says, when you, when you get to this place, he said, I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna, and, and, and blessing you, I will bless you. He says, I'm gonna make you famous. He says, all the, in the NLT, it says, all families on earth will be blessed. But in another translation, it says, all nations on earth will be blessed through you. And so, and so Abram or Abraham, this new thing was the very thing that God was going to use to bring about a new level of impact. Because at this point in his life, Abraham was completely childless. He didn't have a son or let alone a daughter. And yet God is telling him, hey, everyone on earth is gonna be blessed through you. You are gonna have an impact that carries out through generation after generation after generation. And God was doing a new thing for him, but, but it was this very thing that God was going to use to bring about a blessing that he'd never seen before. That when God calls you to do something new, to take you to a new thing, to ask you to do something new, it's as even as Alyssa was talking about an offering, it's to bless you. It's to bless you. That God doesn't have any needs he doesn't need anything from you, but he wants, he wants to bless you. He wants to take you to a greater level of impact. But understand that this wasn't just a suggestion for Abraham, for Abram. It says in, in, in verse four, it says in verse four, so Abram departed as the Lord had instructed. You can circle that in your Bible. If you're taking notes, you can write that down, that new things are are an instruction from the Lord very often. New things are often an instruction from the Lord. That it, it, it wasn't a suggestion or a good idea for Abram to go to a, a new place, that God was saying, hey, I want you to go and do this. I want you to go and live in this new place to, to be led by me. And it, it, is a, it is a command from the Lord. So God was commanding him to have a new level of impact, a new level of blessing, a new level of breakthrough. God wants to take you to a place where he does something new so that you can have great impact. You're meant to do something significant. Your life is, is not meant to just like sit here in a seat on Wednesday night and, and just like, hear things and just participate in like this nice little culture and have some fun. No, God, I believe really in a, in a time in our church that God is speaking like new things. God is like wanting to do new things in people. But it's, it's, it's so that you can do something significant for the kingdom of God. And it's for this reason 
that, that I believe that when God is trying to do new things in people or when God calls people to do new things, that I believe it's for this reason, one of the reasons why Satan works so hard to get people tied up, bound by fear so that they don't step out and do the things that God is calling them to do. When I was about 12, 13, 14 years old, my dad, uh, we, we got a swimming pool in, in our backyard, like one of the, like the circular, um, you know, like the hard, not like an inflatable one, but like a circular hard one. And um, you know, so I, like, I knew how to swim. I was on the swim team when I was like six, but we get the pool and I, I never realized that my dad had no idea how to swim. And so, and so he, he was so afraid that he would like get in the water and you know how like you, you horse play with your, your, your friends or your parents if you're like in a pool, he would like not let us touch him. Like he was that afraid of the water. He's so afraid that he would not let you like move his feet off the ground. Like to hold onto the side and like to pick his feet up what like no go like he his feet had to be touching the bottom of the pool or he was like legit having a panic attack one time he was in like he fell off a boat and was in like knee deep of water with my sister when she was like six and he almost drowned my sister because he thought he was gonna die but he was in like knee deep water and he just had to stand up so you know this was a level of fear that we're talking about and so we begin to teach him how to swim to, to teach him to like move his arms and kick his feet, that sort of thing. And it was a whole thing to even get him to put his face under the water. Like he was that afraid. And so we, we worked with him and got him to where like he could swim across our pool. You know, it's like four feet of water or so. And I don't know, 16 feet across. And so, and so one day we are, we're on vacation and we end up at a, a, a hotel where there's a pool that has a deep end in the pool. And so we're like, come on, dad, like go, go across the deep end. Like you can do it. You can do it. And he's, he's just not having it, right? He's, he's just not going to swim across this deep end. And he's saying things like, like, no, I can't, I can't do that. I've never done before. And, and totally afraid of going into this new area, this new territory that he'd ever been before. But what we did talk him into was, was going into the deep end, but holding on to the edge. Going into the deep end, but yet not completely engaging with the entire activity. He was there, but he wasn't willing to let go and be fully engaged in a level that he'd never done before. And I believe that, that God, was, God was speaking this to me so strongly uh, in the past couple of days that, that God has, has called, there's, people in here tonight, that God has called you to do something significant, significant, has called you to go to the deep level, a deeper level. Maybe it's, it's a deeper level of, of obedience where you begin to like share your faith like, like you've never shared before, to call you to go to a deeper level in, in him and in knowing him, a deeper level in fasting, uh, uh, maybe to, to begin to pray like you've never prayed before. Maybe it is to go to a literal physical location, to, to go somewhere that God has never called you before. I believe that God has, has called someone, has called some people in here tonight where he's taking you to somewhere that you've never been before, taking you somewhere that, that something to do something that you've never done before. And Satan, I believe, has tried so hard to get you bound by fear to say, okay, you know what? I might get in the deep end, but I'm just going to hold on to the edge and not actually let God have full control. I'm gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to pray, but I'm not really going to pray like like I have like like with my whole heart to give, to give God everything that I have, to have some level of reservation to say, okay, I feel God telling me to go to talk to this, this person and to tell them about Jesus, whatever. But you know, I, I'm going to just like, I'm just going to like pray for them from like a distance and not actually approach them. Like I feel to have some level of reservation and God is what I believe that God is saying is that he wants to release you tonight to release you from every sense of fear, from every sense of self doubt, from every sense of doubting God to say, you know what? If God has called me to a another level, if God is calling me to do something that I've never done before, then who am I to sit back and to tell God, no, who am I to sit back and to say, you know what? I, I 
I, I, let me think this through. Let me calculate all of the, the resource issues that I have here. Let me calculate to see how I can make this thing work out before I ever actually step out and, and into this deep end. No, God is, what I believe God is saying is that he wants to release some people tonight of fear so that we run full force into everything that God has for us so that we can be people that say, God, I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll say whatever you want me to say. I'll swim in whatever level of deep water that you have for me. In, in, the, in the Bible, in Exodus chapter three, we come across the account where God calls Moses to go and rescue the children of Israel from Egypt. And as God is talking through to, to Moses through this burning bush experience, he begins to say, hey, I don't, Moses begins to say, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say. And so God tells him what to say. And then Moses says, okay, well, what if they ask who sent me? And then he, God responds to that. And then Moses says, well, I don't really know what to do. And so then God gives him a rod and a staff. And then, then Moses says, okay, well, what if they don't believe me? And God says, okay, well, here's, here's what I want you to tell them. All the way up in, until Exodus chapter four, If you want to turn there, I'm going to read just a few scriptures. Exodus chapter four, starting in verse 10. So this is after they've gone back and forth several times. Exodus four, verse 10, it says, but Moses pleaded with the Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been. And I'm not now, even though you've spoken to me. I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. Then the Lord asked Moses, who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will be with you as you speak and I will instruct you in what to say. But Moses again pleaded, Lord, please send someone else. Then the Lord became angry with Moses. All right, he said, what about your brother Aaron, the Levite? And so then he goes on and, and chooses someone else to, 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 be, to, to be like the voice of God. And so what we have here is, is an account where this man, he really does get used mightily by the Lord, if, if you read the rest of the book of Exodus, used so mightily by God, but because of fear, limited what God could do in his life. Because of fear, had, had a level of, a level where he missed the complete significance of what God wanted to do for him and through him. And he, he really says two things. He says, I'm not able. And then he also says, he, well, he doesn't really say, but he implies that God is enable. I'm not able and God is enable. At first he says, God, I'm not a very good talker. God, I, I don't really think I have the ability. I don't think I don't think I can do what you are calling me to do. And that a lot of the times is a baseline fear for people. They look at their own, their own abilities, their own adequacies, and they compare it to what God is calling them to do. And they say, man, I'm not, I'm not enough. I don't have what it takes. I'm not big enough. I can't speak like that person. I can't, I can't do that like, like my friend does it. I can't, I can't do it. I don't have what it takes so interesting enough tonight, Alyssa talked about it. And then we have this, the, the song that says, it's not by my might nor by my power, but it's by his spirit says, says God. So Moses was consumed with his own abilities, his own adequacies or inadequacies. And that allowed him to dip into fear and became a limiter in what God wants to do and what God wanted to do for, for him and through him. But yet, whenever we begin to step into a realm of the spirit and get our eyes off of ourselves, we begin to see if God is calling me to it, then he's going to be the one to equip me to do it. I don't have what it takes. That's right. That's because it's not my idea. It's God's idea. If it was your idea, then sure, you would have the abilities and the resources and the talent and the anointing to do it. But it's God's idea. It's God's call. And the Bible says in Ephesians 3.20 that God does immeasurably more than we could ask, 
think or imagine, that he can do immeasurably more. So if it's God's idea, then it's going to be more than what we could ever come up with. If it's God's idea, it's going to be greater than what what we could ever scheme anyways. And so if we're looking at it and we're saying, man, this is bigger than me, then we should actually be cheerful and say, well, great. That means God is doing something in my life. You know, just like the story of David and Goliath. If David went up another person with a slingshot, that would have been one thing. But then God takes them before a giant, someone that's nine feet tall. And he doesn't say, oh man, I don't, I don't know if I, I, I am able to do this. I don't know if I have what it takes. No, what, what does he say? He says, this is actually God's battle. He says, who are you to defy the armies of the living God? This has got nothing to do with me. This doesn't have anything to do with, with my abilities, my capabilities. I mean, good Lord, he killed a giant with the sword, a giant who had a sword with a slingshot. That doesn't make any sense because see, whenever you begin to walk in the spirit and walk in sheer obedience to what God says to do, regardless of what you think your innate abilities are, God will make your natural ability supernatural. God will make your natural wisdom supernatural. God will make your natural fill in the blank supernatural. Moses, he doubted himself, but then he also doubted God himself. Because whenever he responded, God, I don't have the innate ability to do it. God says, well, don't I make those who speak, those who don't? Didn't I make the ears and the eyes? God says, I'm the one that made all of those things. So don't you think I could give you the ability? And then Moses says, just send somebody else. You know. So really what he's saying is, God, I don't believe that you can do this. I don't believe that you can do this. And I like how this actually unfolds because he doesn't ever actually come out and directly say it. He doesn't ever come out and say, I don't believe you, God. And people that walk in fear, most of the time they don't ever say quite literally, I don't believe God can do this. I don't believe God can. But what they, what they do is by their choice and by their actions, basically say that. They say, Jay, just, just send someone else. I don't think I can. I don't think I can. But the Bible says in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39, if you would turn there. It says, but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. We do not, we do not belong, we are not of those, we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. So where other people can doubt themselves, can doubt God, that's not going to be the identity that we choose to live with, that we're going to be people that say, God, if you would have me to go wherever, I will go there. If you would have me to do, I will do it. To be someone that says, God, you can take me to a deep level, even if it, even if it is a level that we've, we've never seen before, even if it's a level that we've never swam in before, to say, God, you can use me to do whatever you would have me to do. You can use me. In the story of Abram or Abraham, we don't really see this being an issue for, for Abraham, but the idea that he had to leave his family, I think is very significant. Because whenever God wants you to do something new, you have to inevitably leave something old. Right, it's what happens whenever we get saved. The, the Bible says, if any man, if any woman is in Christ, he is a new creation. It says the old has gone, the new has come. In order to step into something new, you have to leave something behind. And for Abram, this was, this was his family. Now, in a literal sense, I think this is so powerful. In a literal sense, one of the things that holds people back and stepping out to do what God has called them to do is their family, is their family. They'll, 
they want to, people want to be close to their family. People don't want to upset their family. People will go to the same church for 45 years because they don't want to upset their mother. It's like, well, this is where we've always gone. It's just like, I don't care what my family is doing. I don't care what my family thinks. I don't care whether they like me, whether they think that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. What I care about is the Lord. You know, Jesus, he specifically says, I've come to turn fathers against sons, mothers against daughters, not to bring peace, but a sword. In the sense that, that whenever we begin to follow God, there's gonna be people that don't like it. There's gonna be people that don't like the call that God has on your life. You know, to be a preacher, you, know, you, oh, so you wanna go to ministry school, oh, you must think you're really better than everybody else, you know. Yo, you, 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 wanna, you wanna become a millionaire? Oh, that's very typical. Who do you, let me guess who you listen to, Joel Osteen? You know, and then just mock the things of God and mock God in the plans that he has for your life. And so family can, can be a very real hindrance to people. But even metaphorically speaking, it's like he, he had to leave something behind. He had to leave a, a way of, of living. He had to leave his house, he had to leave pr probably his belongings. He had to leave something behind and step into something new. And so what I feel God's saying is that in order to step into something new, for you tonight specifically, I mean, is that you have to get used to being in a place of unfamiliarity to get used to be in a place where things aren't familiar to you. That just because you've never seen someone do it, just because you've never yourself done it before, doesn't actually mean anything. Just because you can't even visualize yourself saying these things or doing these things, doesn't mean anything. Is that God, because God so often takes you to a place of something new, you have to get used to doing things that are unfamiliar to you. In Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, I think we have those scriptures on the screen, that the Bible says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And then if we can go to Philippians chapter three, verse uh, 12. Philippians three twelve. It says, now, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended it, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to things that are ahead. I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. I believe, I believe that there are some people in here tonight that have grown familiar with things. And God is saying, I wanna release you from the things that you've grown familiar with. Release you from a sense of, of belonging to old things. Maybe it's to release you from a certain identity that you've told yourself, that you're a certain type of a person. And listen, I, I really like personality tests and that whole side of things, but sometimes people can put themselves in a box where they feel like they're only a certain type of a person. And I believe God's saying he wants to release you from that. I believe that God is saying he, he wants to release people of, of family ties that would, that would prevent them from being obedient and faithful to the things that God has for them. That God wants to release you from things so that you could actually step out and go into the new thing, to release you from the old so that he can bring you into something new. We referenced Ephesians 3.20 just a few times tonight. If you would turn there. Actually, you can turn there. You can just stand to your feet. It says, now to him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. 
that in order for you to do the new thing that God has for you, to go to a new level, a new place. You know, I, I felt some, some really specific things in my spirit and, and I, I, like I've tried hard not to like name, name them, th though I want to, but I feel like very specific things God is wanting to, to drop into people's spirits tonight. I don't want to say, I'm like, I like have very specific things. I don't want to say them because I don't want you to like hear it from me. I want you to hear it from the Lord. But go ahead and close your eyes. You can even lift your hands. And let's just say, God, whatever you would have me to do, I, I don't want to hear you. God, speak to me. Whatever, whatever, whatever it is, show me, God. I'm not gonna get stuck on anything tied, on, tied to fear, uncertainty, doubt, fear of my abilities, fear of my family, not gonna get stuck on any of that. But God, I'll be obedient and do what you want me to do. God, I, I'm the type of person that I don't, I don't shrink back. I go forward. I don't get stuck in fear.